Guys, today I'm gonna to show you how to make shotgun shells. It's super easy, it's super good, and they're gonna be a hit wherever you cook them. Let's go. Now you wanna make sure you get some sort of mixing bowl uh, just to keep everything as clean as possible. And then we're gonna dump a pound of hamburger, a pound of Italian sausage, a half pound of pepper jack cheese, a half pound of sharp cheddar cheese, and one half pound of cream cheese. Now, you just wanna smash this all together like so. Work it all in there. And it'll take a little time to make sure you get it as even as possible, but you do want to make sure you get it as even as possible. So you make like a prom night, get those fingers in there, smash it all around, do good work. You know what I'm saying? Take some pride in your performance. And that's about what you're looking for right there. You want it to look pretty well worked together. You want to make sure you get a good mix of cheese and meat. It's pretty simple, man. It's not rocket science. Next, you wanna make sure you have some of those big boy manicotti noodles. You don't need to pre-cook them or anything like that. You don't wanna try and use a noodle smaller than this either, either because you're just not gonna be able to jam the meat down in there. You just wanna kinda of carefully work the meat in here. You can do this from a piping bag if you want to, but it seems like a whole lot of extra work for very little extra payoff. And again, there's a lot of finger work here, so. Oh, I broke it, son of a gun. It's not a big deal if you break it. Just you can kind of keep it together. The meat stickiness will kind of hold it. But what we are gonna do is we're gonna kind of stick that there, let that meat hold it. We're gonna swap on over to the other end and we're gonna fill it from this end now. If we break this end, which is a good possibility because I have very large fingers, and I'm not known for my touch on any situations, um, then, you know, we're, we're just gonna have broken ass noodles, I guess, I don't know. Now that we got our noodles all jammed with meat and fingers and all kinds of sexy, sultry things like that, I'm gonna go ahead and finish this off camera. I'm sure you don't wanna watch me just jam this full. Uh, and then we'll reconvene. All right guys, now that we're done stuffing meat, don't be a pervert, it's time to take our bacon grab a piece of bacon and we're just gonna wrap the bacon around that manicotti, just like that. Easy as can be, don't worry if it hangs off a little bit, it's not a big deal. The smoker will make it right for you. All right guys, now for our final step before we get it on the smoker, we're gonna take some rub. Today I'll be using Heath Riles honey chipotle rub and then we're just going to give it a good hit of that rub just like that yeah pack it on there this probably isn't going to work but i'm going to put some on these bare ones over here because i might as well try to cook them and see what happens right Guys, that's all the prep work it takes now. I'm gonna put these in the refrigerator. I'm gonna let them sit for about three or four hours, kind of let some of the fats from those meats kind of seep into those noodles. That's what's gonna make those noodles good and soft. So don't skip that step. Best if you can leave them overnight, but we're gonna do it for about three to four hours. All right, I got my smoker set at 275 degrees. I'm gonna set these on the baking rack directly on my racks. I don't expect these to turn out well, to be honest with you, but uh, these are gonna turn out really good. So we got it at 275. We're gonna give it about an hour. We're gonna check for that internal temperature of 165. All right, so our shotgun shells are exactly where we want them, 165 degrees internal. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and hit a little glaze on these. I'm gonna do it the worst way possible because I do not have a brush with me, apparently. So I'm just gonna do a little pour job over the top of this. 
You can use any kind of sauce that you like. I'm using some of that Killer Hogs uh, vinegar sauce. This is gonna make an absolute nightmare of a mess inside of my smoker, but uh, you know, this is where I'm at right now, so this is what I'm doing. Now these guys right here are definitely not turning out. That's kind of what I expected. But these guys right here so far are fire. They're gonna be perfect. So we're gonna let this set for about 10 minutes and then we'll come back to it. All right guys, our shotgun shells are done and they are looking premium. Let's dig into these here. Look at that. Tell me that doesn't look delicious. Guys, guys, before we take a bite of our good shotgun shells, which we know are gonna be good, let's go ahead and try one of these guys. First off, the shell is not soft. Oh, it's not good. It's not good. If we learned anything today, it's just the bacon. You need to make sure you buy enough bacon for all the shells. Now that we've suffered, let's go ahead and have some pleasure here. Mm. That's delicious. It's, it's meaty, it's cheesy, it's sweet. It's got a little kick to it. That, my friend, is good. Hell yeah. Guys, if you've never had shotgun shells before, I suggest you give them a try. These things are super cool to bust out on a grill, uh, on a grill out day when you got the friends and family over. I'm gonna go ahead and eat the rest of this one. Or I might eat all these. I haven't decided. There's nobody here to stop me at this point. I could just eat them all. I might do that. Skullandmortar.com. For your spices, your rubs, your t-shirts, we got them all. Make sure you like, subscribe, do all that stuff. It's super important to the channel and it really helps us out. Thank you guys for watching. I'll try to make sure that I have enough bacon next time. Let's freaking go right to the end of this video. Peace out. I suck at ending videos.